Welcome everyone to this service, a very short service from Tarbert Church of Scotland once again um, tonight. We at the prayer meeting were looking at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27 and that's really all that I have this uh, in this clip just now. It's just a summary of our Bible study. Can I, could I give you this encouragement if you are uh, able to uh, join us at the prayer meeting do please come and join us via zoom uh, we will send the link to anybody who uh, requests it just get in touch via the website or by maybe someone you know in the congregation we're delighted to see as many as can uh, coming along to the prayer meeting the prayer meeting is always a source of encouragement and a blessing to god's people and we pray that uh, this will be a blessing to us all as we gather together in this way a different way obviously we're going to uh, look to together for a short time at what paul says in colossians chapter 1 and verse 27 but before that i'm going to say a short prayer so let's bow our heads and uh, let us pray together Father, we thank you for your word and for your Holy Spirit and for the opportunity we have tonight to, to come close to you, to draw near to you. And we ask, Lord, that we would be able to do so by faith, that we might be upheld by the precious promises of God and give thanks, Lord, for your great mercy and love towards us. We ask that you would draw near to all who uh, are in any way affected by the coronavirus or by the symptoms of it we are conscious of how many uh, are suffering and struggling with spikes throughout the country and indeed the toll that it is having even now upon uh, other age groups too we ask lord that you would upbuild and bless us as a nation as a world and as a people that we might be able to look beyond ourselves and look to the God who has given us in Jesus Christ the greatest gift and the greatest blessing, the greatest promise that we might ever know. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your great love and compassion towards us. And we pray that you will hear us, Lord, as we call upon your name tonight. Hear your people's prayers wherever they may be. May the every prayer meeting and may every prayer offered uh, just be to your glory, Lord. Let it be a, a blessed hour of prayer for every one of us. Hear us, Lord, as we uh, lift others before you in our prayers. As we pray for all who are sick and cast down, we also pray for those who are broken hearted in spirit. We remember again, Lord, tonight, our dear sister Marian, in the loss of her husband, John Angus. And we lift them before you, uh, John Norman and Erica, in the loss of their dad, and we Erin, and her, her mum, Shona, in the, in the loss of uh, her grandpa. And we ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon them all tonight. Praying that you would watch over us and keep us and make your face to shine upon us, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Could you read some verses now uh, from Colossians chapter 1? Uh, it is the verses 24 to 29. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, 
warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with his energy that he powerfully works within me. Amen. And we pray that God would bless to us all that reading of his holy word. Last week we thought of reconciliation in the prayer meeting in the verses prior to this how how we who were strangers to grace and to God have been brought near because of Jesus have been brought back into uh, the former state of harmony that we enjoyed through Jesus Christ and specifically through the the death of Christ on the cross he died as a as the man who is God and he died to refute those who taught otherwise. And here in first in Colossians chapter 1, Paul is building on that truth, encouraging the Colossians to remain strong in their faith, encouraging them to stay strong and steadfast and sure while the billows roll. He tells them of the hope they have, a, a hope that they didn't deserve, but a hope that is theirs by faith. If we have this hope as an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure, then we need fear nothing. And when we come to our reading tonight, and especially to verse 27, we read there one of the great promises that Paul gives us in this letter, that Jesus Christ is to his people the hope of glory. And I hope that that is a, a personal promise that we can lay hold of and keep. The only hope of glory is Jesus Christ. And so my thrust is that for you and for me that Christ Jesus is and has to be the hope of glory. For you and for me, the only hope we can ever have is Jesus. The hope that will not disappoint us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 puts it in. As I as I get older, I realize all the more that how little value or how little worth the things in this life have compared to Jesus. Nothing compares to him. And the glorious things of this world, and the life of this world is as trivia and will be forgotten soon. The valuable things of this world are as nothing. Uh, a Texel Ram Lamb was sold last week at Lanark for £368,000. A sheep. Uh, when I had lambs, I thought I did well uh, if I got £45 each for the good ones. But in a few years' time, this very valuable piece of livestock will be dead and he'll have bred a lot of meat by then but he'll be dead and think of the the glory of the sports field the adulation and the trophies and the salaries the idols and the idolatry of sports stars in our world of maybe been banging on a bit about that during lockdown why is all the fuss about something that wasn't even happening for so long and we not realize that there are more important things. The great and the good who bask in human glory cannot be compared with the glory of God. Writing to the, the Corinthians, and he's writing about something specifically concerning the resurrection of the dead. But Paul says this in the 15th chapter of the Corinthian letter. The, there are heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For star differs from star in glory. So tonight I'd like to look first of all at this statement, hope of glory. That Jesus is the hope of glory. The word glory is in New Testament is doxa. It, it can mean magnificence, it can mean excellence, it can mean preeminence or dignity or grace or majesty. Uh, the Old Testament word in Hebrew was slightly different, chabod, meaning the, the weighty 
or the splendorous presence of God, such as they experienced as a people, the Israelites on Mount Sinai, or what Isaiah experienced in his vision in Isaiah chapter 6, that one of the seraphim that he saw cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Something, something great and wonderful. But notice how Paul puts it in this verse, speaking of this glory, that it is Christ in you. It seems to be the reverse of what he's previously said. And he's made mention of it before in the very beginning of Colossians chapter 1. To God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. The faithful brothers and sisters in Christ are the faithful brothers and sisters in whom Christ dwells. God is in his people. That's a wonderful promise. It's a wonderful fact. It's not just abstract theology. The God indwells his people. By faith, Jesus is in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And for us, he is the hope of glory. But there is something else here as well, and that is that he has chosen a people for himself. God has chosen us. When I was researching and doing some study for this, I came across a Bible website to look up a text on, and I, I saw an advert there uh, for Compassion, a wonderful organization doing a fine work. And the blurb on it simply said, do you share a birthday with a child in poverty? And I entered my date of birth and it came up with 356 children living in dire poverty in the third world in need of sponsorship. And I don't doubt for one minute that all of this was genuine. But who was I to choose? Who was I to choose and ignore the rest? How could I choose? I will find it very difficult. Now we're not talking here in Colossians chapter 1 about a human choice being made. We're talking of God's choosing of a people for himself. Not because they deserve it, not because they are especially good, not because they're upstanding or righteous or anything else. Think of it in this way, God chose uh, the Jews for himself as his people, not because they were good or special, not because they were numerous or powerful, but because he chose to set his love upon them. And then God makes known later on that he has chosen others too. And he has, in a wonderful way, which Paul makes clear here, he has chosen to make his Love known to the Gentiles. And he describes that in this passage as a mystery. The mystery of God. The one who chooses a people for himself is God. We have to see also that what he is, Paul is talking of us about here is that those who believe in Jesus Christ those who, whether they are Jew or whether they are not, are those of whom he is speaking. Now, we do believe that the mystery he is speaking of here is something he knows himself by revelation. Privately and personally, he knows that God has dealt with him. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints in verse 26. You know, I would say beware of all who uh, speak of mysterious hidden keys and codes and principles in scripture that are hidden from most and only revealed to a few. What Paul is talking of here is that 
It's the beginning of what became known as Gnosticism, Gnosis I know. And Paul is turning this heresy that there were a special people, a privileged elite who knew everything or knew a lot that others didn't. Paul is turning this round and saying this mystery that was hidden for ages and for generations has now been revealed and the mystery can be expressed as simply as this and that is that Jesus loves you. And this was radical. This was controversial. It was especially controversial in Jewish circles as we can imagine that God is for the Gentiles. The mystery hidden for ages, the earth-shaking fact that God had set his love upon more than the Jew. And Paul is able to speak about this revelation as God has made it known to him. Uh, for instance, in Ephesians chapter 3, it's interesting that much of this comes from the times when Paul is himself in prison. The prison epistles, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. When Paul is in confinement and may be more prone to be thinking things through. He tells us this in Ephesians chapter 3. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. The mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, are members of the same body, and are partakers of the promise in Christ. And this truth is not something that is emanating from Paul's mind, but a revelation of what God's will and purpose for them is. And it's something that the others have already seen. The other apostles have already seen this. A great example is given in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 48, when Peter had preached a sermon and the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were there, who heard the word. And that word was to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish people, they themselves were filled with the Holy Spirit, confirming what Paul and Barnabas were to say later, that Jesus had come as a light to the nations to make God's salvation reach to the ends of all the earth. The choosing of God and the mystery of God to reveal the glory of God to his people. I close uh, this short study just now with a few verses from Romans chapter 15. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And may that be true of us. May it be true of you, friend, as you watch. And may it be true of me. May the God of hope fill us with his joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may truly abound in hope at all times. Let's close this study with prayer. Let's come to God in prayer once again. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the hope of glory, that in Jesus Christ we see the one who is the personification and the very expression of your love towards us. And, O oh God, we ask that you will uh, be with each one of us tonight as we uh, turn to you and give thanks 
for your great love, that we can truly say that you have set your love upon a people who do not deserve it. We pray then, the Lord, that you would part us with your blessing and that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit might rest upon and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Well, folks, until we meet again, I pray that God would bless you and that he would watch over us all. God bless you all now.